Hi, this is Don with uh, Roadrunner Photography Tours. Today I'm going to put together a little video on light painting. As you can see, this old Dodge truck, it's just, there's a lot of different shots here on the left. For instance, you know, I've got the light here on the left, and it's nice light, that looks good. But where's the rest of the scene? It's just not enough to carry the image. Over here, I've got a little light on the left side. Again, it works, it's just not enough. So, then here's one where I lit the background. I lit the trees, I lit this fence line. So, again, it's where we just have to uh, put things together. Now, here I'm constantly, you can see the beam of light here on the right side of the screen, but, you know, I'm, I want these, this row of trucks. So, when you look at the front of this old Dodge, your eyes got somewhere else to go besides just the truck. But yet, it doesn't dominate the scene, so you're going to come back to the truck. Whenever I light paint, while I might try to put things together in one shot, depending on what it is, sometimes it's very easily doable, other times not so much. And, you know, in this case, not so much. I couldn't get, you know, light on the trees, light on the trucks, light on the primary truck, you know, light on the lawn. There's just no way to do that all in one exposure. A common practice I use is blending in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started. And you just have to pick one image to be your base image. And I've decided I'm going to pick this one. Uh, now, if you'll notice here on the side, they're all JPEGs. I do not shoot in JPEG. These have been converted from the original RAW files. It's just easier and quicker to work with for demonstration purposes. Okay, this is going to be my base image. You know, the light on the trees is really nice. I'm not really a big fan of this fence here. The light on the trucks over here isn't bad. The light on the trees. So it's, it's a starting point, and that's all it is. So let's go back to the bridge. And a word about Bridge, Photoshop, and Lightroom. I use all three. Um, I use Lightroom to import all my images, to catalog those images. Um, when I'm working on a single image, I take it from Lightroom, sometimes into Photoshop, or oftentimes into Photoshop. But when I'm doing um, composites, I just find it a little quicker and easier to work with Bridge than Lightroom. But it's it's personal preference. There's no reason you couldn't just use exclusively Lightroom in Photoshop to do this. But uh, anyway, just wanted to get some thoughts on that out of the way um, in case someone was wondering. Let's just go ahead and pick the first image. The other thing I was talking about, look, at, just look at the difference here in, in the light. I mean, you know, there's some nice ambient light still um, on this and I'm going to go back to the bridge real quick and just show you. I started working on this at 8.46 p.m. which was probably about 20 minutes after sunset and then I finished working on it at 9.03 p.m. That means you know finished running around lighting different areas and I did more than just the shots you're seeing. These are just the shots I chose to use to try to put this image together. So there, there's certainly more to you know there were more than just these images, but uh, always take more images than you think you're going to need, because if you don't, you know, there's a good chance you're going to get back in front of the computer and wish you had just that little something else. So, back to Photoshop. So this tutorial is really about just assembling uh, simple light paintings, get them in Photoshop, getting them blended. Just concentrate on that. So I click the Move tool, which I have up here in the top left corner. I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to just click, drag, place it in the original image, let go of the mouse, let go of the Shift key. It auto-aligns. It's right there. There's the old image. There's the new image. Okay, so I want to paint in aspects of this onto that background image. Down here along the bottom, this is called your layers palette here on the right side of the screen and this is your, this is layer masks, this little button here. So I'm gonna hold, if I just click that, I'll just show you, it brings up a layer mask but it's white. White reveals, so basically it's revealing everything about this layer one is coming right through this layer mask 
So that's not how I want to work um, because what you would be doing is you would be subtracting what you don't want out of this image. I like to build or add to my images, not subtract. So I generally use black layer masks, not 100% of the time, but most of the time. So let's just hit Command Z to reverse that command. I'm going to hold down the Alt key this time, click on the layer mask, and I'm going to get a black layer. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to come over here to the left side of the screen and let's go ahead and just make this full screen. Okay, so I'm going to come over to the left side of the screen and I'm going to click on the brush tool. Now I just want to talk real briefly about the brush tool. There's uh, you don't even worry about that. You just want a regular brush tool. These are your brushes. Um, generally the size is adjustable and I don't come in here to change sides, sizes. Um, I use the bracket keys on the keyboard to adjust the brush size. Then for hardness though, I will come here. Oops. Okay. But I find 10% hardness works really well and I'll show you in, a, in an upcoming layer what I mean by hardness. Okay. Blend modes. L don't worry about most for most of my light painting I'm going to use normal sometimes I will use a different blend mode when I want just a certain aspect to come through maybe I will only want bright pixels to come through and I might use a screen mode or a lighten mode but but again don't worry about that right now opacity okay this is how much so like if it's fifty percent opacity if I paint on this mask for instance I'm just going to drag across the front of this truck 50% of it came through. Now let me go over here next to it, bring it up to 100%, and then this is actually, of course, the light's falling off. Okay, here you can see this one on the right is brighter than this one in the center. So basically, you know, it's it's how much of that image do you want to come through, or so it, it's just opacity. So I usually st work at 100% and then sometimes and then I'll back off. So I, I I might add more than I want or put more than I want and then I subtract what I don't want. Um, you know one of the things about Photoshop is there's just so many different ways of working in it. Um, you uh, there's not necessarily a right or a wrong. It's just uh, you know, there's different ways to achieve the same thing, and then you have to figure out, well, you know, what really works for me. Um, okay. So, I'm just, this is just getting some of this in here. Okay. You can see the overall image is kind of starting to take shape, but we're still a long way from being finished. I've got some light in the foreground. I've got some light in the background. Obviously, the light in the background appears to be brighter than the light in the foreground. That's not going to work, but we will get to that. We will fix it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close that layer. I, I don't need it. Let's bring this one in. Okay, I just want to get basically like a little wedge here. Just I'm going to use just this to kind of throw a little light um, on the front of the vehicle, a little bit on the lawn. Um, in my light paintings, a lot of times you'll notice the if you really study the direction of light, they don't always just come from one angle. It's not the the idea is that it wasn't solo lit by one light source. Not to say that you couldn't be really super creative with that because then you'd be getting into light and shadows. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself and it's beyond the scope of this video. But I just wanted to throw that little nugget out for something for you to think about. So when you're doing this, you'll you know you'll think hey what if I light this all from this direction or what if I light it from both directions three directions four directions um, it's up to you it's your creation um, there's no right or wrong it's just what works what appeals to you so I'm gonna just drag that over and drop it okay and that was just move tool hold down the shift key click drag release okay so remember I just want this bottom left corner, maybe a little bit of light up on the right side of the truck. That's all I need from this one. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, click on the layer mask. I've got my black layer mask. Click on the brush key and just kind of throw a little bit of... Okay. Now you can see I, I really... that was sloppy. And, and that's okay. It's easily fixed. Um, up around the cab here, um, I did get 
a little bit of the direction of light, but look how big my brush is in relation to this. So I'm going to just hit my bracket key, bring the brush smaller, and see this is where it's spilled. So I'm going to come over here, swap the colors, get my black brush, or get my, um, oops, see the mirror is dark, but now I'm putting the light back on the vehicles. And I've got another layer with the mirror lit, so that's not a problem. Okay, so I just want to brush out you know where I spilled um, spilled a little light okay you can see there's a transition between here and here this is one of those cases where it might be better to work at half opacity just to try to um, kind of smooth out that transition and you know grass is grass can be difficult let me tell you one thing about grass and tree leaves think about you know, each blade in that lawn or each leaf in that tree is reflecting light at a little different angle than the ones next to it. And believe me, that can give you some complexities and headaches and things like that. So think about direction of light when you're shooting. That's, that's all I'm really saying. And like anything else in photography, you know, it's just you have to get out there and practice. So... Anyway, our image is starting to take shape. Of course, the front of the truck still looks kind of hideous. Um, but let's just, let's keep building. Okay, there's that. And, okay, now this is one I like. The front of, this is where I painted just the front of the truck. Um, I like the light on it. I think the front looks really great. It's a nice warm tone. Um, if you take one of my light painting workshops, we'll talk about the different types of light and the different types of uh, color temperatures and pros, cons, how you work with it, how you deal with it, that sort of thing. Okay, again, I'll hold down the Alter Option key, bottom right hand corner of the layer palette, click Layer Mask. Okay, so it's hidden that truck. I want to grab my brush tool and, oops, okay, that's black. I can't paint black on a black mask, so I'm going to change the color over here on the left to uh, my color palette to white and then I'm going to just now of course I'm painting just on the hood but look how big the truck is in the screen I really should blow that up and work on just um, some you know just on just on the truck so that way you can see it I can see it better um, just a better way of doing that. Okay. Now, if you notice, I mean, so the fender was black. I'll just bring this down. Look at how the directional light between this image and this image, you know, is allowing more of the rust in that fender to shine through. Um, also, it's the, uh, you know, the warmer tone of the light. And, okay. Um, it doesn't have to be precise. I mean, the edge of this bumper, I just kind of hit it. it. It's not super precise. Um, doesn't need to be. Now, see how I'm painting the grill is growing, is going warm. That's one where, again, after I'm finished here, oh, no wonder I'm at 52%. There's, okay. So, I'm going to just go ahead and get all this on here. Um, okay. Yeah, if you notice, just that little subtle change, and I don't even remember how I did it on my original one, um, because I first blended this image, you know, like three years ago. Um, but for instance, oops, okay, that's all right. Okay, now, say you go, you know what, that headlight, sh it looks kind of brown, shouldn't be brown. So, but it was that, you know, warm light hitting it. I don't remember. I may have used two or three different lights to light this truck, so it could be a color change, color temperature difference in the light. But anyway, I'm just going to use white. Now I've got a whiter, bluer light here. So anyway, same with the license plate. Oh, now you know what I think. Let's see. Yeah, it's all right. Um, but I need to kind of fix the edges. Okay. Yeah, fix around. Okay, now you see how I spilled over and all of a sudden the grass and everything's going dark here? Because that wasn't what was lit in this image. That was, uh, I was just lighting the truck. So, we come back over, I reverse the brush color, and we brush that out. Okay, change the brush color back to white, finish painting the bumper. Okay, 
let's see. Okay. All right, I just hit the... Um, uh, go ahead and tell you guys. Okay, I kind of hit the tire, and I'm like, that tire does not look right. And, you know, painted over from this layer. So, I just hit, since I just hit just this one area here, I just hit the control Z. Now that I've hit it twice, I'm going to have to step backwards. And, boom. Okay, now that brings back the original color. So, um, okay. So, you know, the front of the truck's looking pretty good there. Uh, you know, the transitions between the lawn eh, could be a little better. But we're going we're gonna to work on that. So, let's go back to the bridge and go, okay, my next one is just the interior cab. I'm going to grab it, grab the move tool, click, drag, and remember I'm holding down the shift key while I do this. Okay. Again, if I hit just the mask tool, it covers it in white, and then what would happen is I'd have to paint out, I'd have to use a black brush, and I'd have to paint out every part of this image except for the window. Don't, not interested in doing it like that. So, click on the layer mask, go to the edit menu, fill, black, and okay. Now, this time I want to use a white brush. I'm going to come over here and change my colors on the color palette. Oh, and one, one just little tip here. Say something happens and all of a sudden you're like, my colors are messed up. Well, that's interesting. Okay, you, you know, you've got a red now, oh, well, okay, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Maybe because I'm clicking on a layer and it knows I can't have a color. Um, that it's got to be a tone. Okay, now if you see this over here on the layers palette, it's like two gray cards instead of white and gray. Right above this is a little icon with a clear box and a shaded box. Click on that and it gives you, see it says default foreground and background colors. So, that way you get your... If you ever lose your white and your black, you can just click on that, get it back real easy. All right, so click on white, and I've got my brush. Let's go ahead and zoom in to the front of the truck, and I'm just using the navigator over here on the right side of the screen. You could use these little, you know, slider bars. That'll work, too. Um, now, I'm not going to, because I, I don't want to make this painstaking, but, you know, there was light coming through this side window um, in the shot, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because it goes a little bit beyond the scope of the tutorial. We're not trying to create, you know, a masterpiece here so much as uh, demonstrate the technique. So, I'm just going around the edges. Now, in this case, I'm just going around the edge of the wiper blade, um, okay, and I'm going to show you something. I'm going to hold down the uh, Alt button. I'm going to click the mask, and then you see that's just the mask. And you can see there's a little light spot in there I missed, but that's the mask. You hold down the Alt key again, click on the mask, it reverts back. Now I could have painted over this entire thing. But then I would have to come back and mask out the windshield molding, the wiper blade, things like that. So, it, again, it just depends on how you want to work. There's no right or wrong way. It's just what, what's comfortable, what fits your workflow. Now, to paint this out, I need to make a smaller brush. Okay. And we're just going to bring it up to here. We're going to touch the edge of the wiper blade. And... Okay. All right. And we'll grab that. Okay. That make it a little smaller. Okay. Now this isn't perfect, but I'm going to zoom out and just kind of let you see that it probably doesn't have to quite be perfect. Um there you go. Um, I think the wiper blade still needs just a little touch up. There's probably a little bit where the uh, where the masking spilled on it. But uh, let's say I got a black layer, and so I just want no. Okay, it's still kind of dark in that image. It, it must have been the underlying base image, which was where I lit the truck from the front, didn't have a really bright 
wiper blade. So that's okay. So let's just come on over. Oh, and then that. Oops. Now let's move over here. Here at Roadrunner, Don knows enough Photoshop to get the work done. Denise knows Photoshop inside and out. So whenever I have a real problem or a challenge, yeah, she's. it's good to have her. She's my resource. Okay, so... You know, you could take a small brush and paint around the windshield opening like I'm doing here. Or, you can just take a big brush, get it, and then come back and do your your touch-ups. Um, I like doing it that way. It's just... There we go. Bring this down just a little bit. Okay. There we go. Because remember, I'm using... And I'll show... I don't know if I remember... I said I was going to show this... Um, with the layer mask and let me go ahead and just show okay click on the hold down the alt key click on the layer mask if you see here this is not a hard line it's essentially feathering and that's what Photoshop is doing when I told you up here in the top left where your hardness is at 10% if I went to 0% it would actually even be a little bit softer line or if I went to a hundred percent matter of fact I'll just show you that's a hundred percent see it's it's real hard there's no feathering so which is okay right here in the middle of the windshield it's not going to cause you any problems um, you can you, you know if you did a uh, like say a soft trace around the inside of the or, or the outer edge of the windshield you could come back and then hit it with the uh, hard brush but I don't think it doesn't it's hard when you try to use the hard brush to go up against your edges okay yeah you can see even here that that's nice we'll see how I'm painting here to get rid of it and the edges are soft whereas the edges here that I was demonstrating the uh, brush opacity or the brush hardness it's a good example okay all right so we're just painting some more get the idea let me just open that up a little wider and again this is you can be as precise as you want to be I tend to go toward trying to be a perfectionist so this is uh, I'm being a little sloppier than I would normally be um, but then again you know it's like it takes longer to be more precise and when you do it's gonna make the video longer okay so that's kind of a quick and dirty cut out of the windshield and you can see I mean when you zoom out I think it's it's fine especially if if you're going to blow this up to gallery size or something you'd probably want to be a little more precise but sharing with your buds online um, I don't think it's as critical uh, they're not going to see this at 72 dots per inch okay so let's come down and grab another image it's going to grab this one where we lit the cars and I'm going to grab my move tool hold down the shift key bring it over drop it on the image let's go ahead and make the image larger and just so you know I, I'm dragging here but I could always come up and go view and then click fit to screen and it would essentially do the same thing just it, probably quicker actually with this the cars were already lit with the other image but in this case they're lit just a little bit more a little bit brighter so we're just going to yep, see how they got a little brighter so I'm just going to paint that in um, just to make the car stand out a little more. Um, remember I said grass can be difficult. See, that's kind of light. What you can do, this is again where the opacity comes in. Okay, I just grabbed it down to 44 and just kind of painted it across here. Now all of a sudden the transition is a little, little more pleasing, not quite so hard and crisp. And let's close off some of these images that we don't need. Let's, grab, let's see. Then I've got this one. Okay. Now this one, obviously, I just hit the left front of the truck with some light. And this is one of the ones that was taken a little later in the evening. Okay. Grab that. Drop that in. Hold down my Alt key. Click on my mask. And grab my brush tool. And paint a little bit on the truck. Getting it a little bit lit from that side. So I'm going to just zoom in and kind of show you what I was working on here on the side. Okay, the transition between the trees and the foreground, it's a little abrupt right here. But um, again, we can 
just kind of darkening the foreground a little bit here at 17% per time. Flip the color up, lighten that. The transition's not quite what I would like, but you know, it's all right. Um, the other thing you can do when the image is finished, the image isn't quite finished, the blending isn't quite finished, there's a fence back here. Now, I don't want to paint this out and totally take take it black, but what I would probably do if I was making this again for real, I'd probably use a combination of cloning, um, or you know what you could do? Just, you know, take it really dark to where it's barely there. Uh, again, I'm only at 17% opacity. I just keep clicking, and so I'm not totally taking it out, but, uh, I'm making it really, really hard to see. Um, you know, to me, it's a distract the fence, the three lines, the post, the gate. It's a distracting object, and so I don't, um, I don't really see the benefit in having it there. But at the same time, you don't want a black hole in your image. Or at least I don't. Th I mean, it's it's a little easier to get away with it at n with night photography. The other thing I was going to point out here. Um, I'm not sure what this little thing, I don't know if it was like a lightning bug or a firefly, but that little guy right here, um, anyway, when you're completely finished, grab your clone tool, hit it, it's gone. It's not a big deal to fix. Okay, let's get, get back. Okay, so that's kind of darkened. Um, I mean, I think that's all right. Okay, so now we have to kind of decide what we're doing here. There's you know, this other fence, there's like an old truck or something in here. It's kind of a mess. So I think there needs to be a little less emphasis on that. So here we've got this image. And so let's grab the move tool, hold down the shift key, bring it over, drop it. Okay. Hold down your alt key, click on your mask and grab your brush. And Again, I'm just kind of painting real low opacity because, you know, there's kind of a stark contrast between this image here and that image um, where you've got light. And there's this hard line. Uh, I wish I had a little bit more of a graceful transition there, but I don't. But it, it's still, I think it's workable. So anyway, so again, I'm at 17% opacity. That's kind of weak. Let's go to 45. Make the brush a little bigger. Okay. And then we can kind of hit the truck a little bit. Oh, and by the way, now see how my mirror here is black? Now, if I only want the light pixels to shine through, I'm just going to, real quick dirty trick, hit screen blend mode, and boom. Um, it did mask in a little bit on the truck behind it because I guess the I'm not sure what let's see I'm not sure exactly why it did that I was hoping it would just do the mirror but it's again it's an easy fix come back over normal blend mode and just a smaller brush comes around I mean for all intents and purposes I think it works so the uh, but that's basically it. Um, at this point, I would collapse the image most likely. I sometimes I go both ways. Sometimes I save this image as kind of like a master, but but it, to work on it further, I would save this, then collapse it. Okay, now um, just one thing real quick. The document's 34.5 megabytes. That's the minimum size with it collapsed or just the background layer. But its current size is 304 megabytes. So it's 10 times larger than it really has to be. So if hard disk space is a premium for you, um, you definitely probably want to get in the habit of flattening your images. So I just flattened it. Now it's 34 and a half megabytes. And at this point, I might consider some targeted adjustments to the color or you know, a little dodging, burning, uh, maybe just a hint of contrast. I find that you don't really, if you go applying too much contrast to this image, it's going to brighten the brights and it's really going to darken the darks. So contrast really isn't, it's something I use very sparingly with my light paintings. But again, this is just the basic idea of how you do 
blending for light painting in Photoshop and it's just meant to get you going in the right direction and if anybody has any questions you can always drop me an email at don at roadrunnerphotographytours.com thanks for watching